everybody out there. Welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric and today we're going to be planting my peach tree. Well, as you can see, the peach tree is already planted and that's because, uh, you know what, if you want to see the reason why, you can go check out my uh, planting a Meyer lemon in container uh, video that that I put out earlier today um, the reality is is that the video was crap so I'm gonna <laughs> reshoot almost the entire thing I'm still gonna bring you in just like I did with the Meyer lemon I'm gonna bring you in and show you the tree and talk a little bit about the Alberta peach why I chose this plant and uh, or this peach variety in particularly um, and then I'm gonna cut to me actually planting the plant so you can see the uh, technique that I used to plant the Alberta peach tree here. Okay, as you can see, the peach tree is not really that big. It's only about three feet right now. Uh, that's the size I chose to buy it at. Uh, with the Meyer lemons, I wanted to get fruit on it the first year. Uh, with the peaches, I didn't mind if it had to grow a, a year or two before I get peaches. They say I can still get peaches on the first year. I don't know about that. We'll have to see. I really think maybe on the second or third year. Again, this is a grafted plant. It's been grafted to a uh, specific rootstock. It has been single stemmed. They have knocked all the branches off all the way up to about two and a half feet and only left the leaves on the top. That's going to encourage uh, more uh, branch growth up top and it's going to encourage the tree to grow real high. Now the reason why I picked the Alberta peach itself is because of its, it's one of the most disease resistant peaches that, that, are, that is available today. You look it up, the Alberta peach. It is highly known for its large pieces and its delicious taste. Perfect for canning, for cobblers, for pies. Um, not only is this tree one of the most disease resistant trees out there, it is also insect resistant as well. Uh, it's been bred specifically this way. The insects do not like this peach tree. So you don't have to use any harmful chemicals or anything to grow this. You don't even have to spray it with pyrethrum. I know it's organic, but it is an indiscriminate killer. Um, so I don't have to do that with this tree. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is give it some love, some fertilizer, some water every now and then. And that's it. So let's cut to the video of me actually planting this. I'm going to cut out all the garbage of me uh, over explaining. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I uh, guided you a little bit. If you're going to purchase any uh, peach trees or lemon trees or Meyer lemon trees or key lime like I got, I hope you choose uh, fast growing trees because as far as I'm concerned, they're a very reputable company. Uh, I love their website. I love the ease of picking out the trees. You know, sometimes when it comes to fruit trees, uh, I was so scared to buy any because I couldn't find enough information on the different types of fruit trees and what would work well in New Jersey. I mean, I knew peaches, but you can mess up and buy a southern peach tree uh, that should be in Georgia and, uh, and, and basically kill it off. So. But that, uh, fast growing trees made it so easy for me to pick what I wanted that it took no time at all. And as soon as I saw I could actually plant a Meyer lemon tree here and have peaches in my backyard, I jumped on top of it. So I hope I got you to them. Um, I love this company. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Like I said, I'm going to really butcher cut it and uh, have a great evening. I love you all. All right. Good night. All right, guys. Here we are, and we're getting ready to uh, plant my Alberta peach tree. I picked a nice spot out of my yard that it's going to kind of be out of the way. Uh, it's not going to throw shade on any of my other plants. The sun is over there in about my one o'clock position, um, due southeast, right, or southwest. And uh, now there's two schools of thought uh, about planting fruit trees in the ground. Um, one is that you should never use your spade shovel like this because it's concave and you end up making a round circle to put your plant in, you know. 
if your plant is root bound or the roots are a little bit overgrown and they start to spiral around the plant if you plant them in a round hole those roots are going to continue to spiral around instead of spreading out like you want them to so uh, it's not even a theory anymore because there's so many biologi uh, biologists and agricultural people that have tested this theory that it's just pretty much proven that if you use a square shovel and instead of making a round circle you make yourself a box it's definitely a root there I'm gonna have to get rid of now I don't want to get rid of this soil either because I'm only going to amend it with a little bit of that mushroom compost. Um, the earthworms are right there. Because I don't want the tree to be misled in thinking that the soil quality that I'm going to add to this uh, is going to be the soil quality it's going to live in for the rest of its life. I wanted to get used to my native soil here. I know that this is where I'm living, this is where I'm going to produce my peaches. So now that I pretty much have a square circle dug, I'm going to go a little bit deeper with it of course. If those roots that are wrapped around the plant, they're going to come to a hard stop on one of these corners and they're going to be forced to start branching out instead of continuing around the plant. Believe me, I know it sounds a little ridiculous. I thought it was too when I first heard about it, but it's, it's, it's the truth after researching it and finding out that Rutgers University right here in New Jersey did a study on comparing trees, fruit trees that were planted in a square hole compared to a round hole. And they found out that the trees that went into the square hole fared much, much better. They had much, much better root development. All right, let me test the height of this because like I said, okay, here's the root ball. Let's place that on the side. Roots are beautiful and nice. They're not wrapped around the ball. They're not, they're not starting to spin. I'm going to put the rest of the soil that they gave me right there. And I would really love for this tree to be a lot higher because I want to mound it up a little bit, especially with the mulch and everything. And if I buried it at this level, it would just be way too low. So let me add a couple inches of my mushroom compost couple handfuls of my native soil mix it up mix it up and of course like I said fruit trees do like sandy loamy soil so there's a lot of organic material in there now I'm just adding my all-purpose sand a couple handfuls should do it Wonderful. Still want it a little bit higher. Put those wormies back in there. All right. I like it. Okay. I like the height. The ground level's right here. It's just a tad higher. I'm going to add some more mushroom compost. This is going to add some additional nutrition. Nice organic nutrition that's not going to just leach away from the soil. There we go. Like I said, I'm going to add that native soil back. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to take the Dr. Earth's fruit tree fertilizer. The, uh, what is it, 552, right? Yep, 552. 
and most of it flew away, which is awesome. I love wasting stuff. All right, I don't mind throwing on a little heavy because it's all natural. It's going to break down. It's going to water down. The plant needs the nutrients. It's going to give it a nice pop at the beginning of the season. So now that I got that down, I'm going to go get myself another bucket of mushroom compost. Remember, you can pile up the compost in the soil. Just don't put it right up, up against the stem. Let me take my rake. Again, I'm going to pull the mulch back in. This is going to help with moisture retention, insulation, weed control. really want these big sticks they're not gonna hurt anything but they're gonna take a very long time to break down all right so I'm just gonna mound it up I'll probably add a little bit of mulch in a week or two after everything settles down and like I said, keep it a couple inches away from the stem. Make sure you don't get any stem rot. And let's water it in. And I'm gonna give it a, a really good watering. Make sure those roots don't have any air gaps. Let the tree know. You're in a safe spot tree. It's okay. Now, as you can see, my peach tree is uh, is dramatically smaller than my Meyer lemon tree. Um, but like I showed you on uh, fastgrowingtrees.com, you can choose to buy these trees at different heights, um, at different years of growth, and uh, that'll determine whether you are able to get fruits the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year. Just like if you try to use these, uh, try to grow a fruit tree to seed, it can take up to 10 to 20 years to see fruit on a tree. And what Fast Growing Trees does is they actually graft a mature uh, branch stock to a mature root stock. Okay, this is the branch from another peach tree that they graft it down onto another root stock. And this is going to Okay, I'm seeing the water start to pull up. So I'm gonna stop watering now. It's draining nice. I see it draining. Okay, it's all the way down the ground level. Got sidetracked while I was talking to you. So where was I? Yeah, they, they grabbed the branch onto a rootstock and you can get dwarf varieties that only grow to a certain height, four, five, six feet tall, and that's about it. Now this Alberta peach tree, it is, um, uh, what you call it? It is cold tolerant down to negative 20 degrees. That is more than fine for where I live in central Jersey. Uh, this can grow upwards of 15 to 20 feet high and 15 to 20 feet wide. Uh, but with pruning, you can keep this a lot smaller and keep it more convenient to pick. Um, and so that's it. That's that's all you have to do to plant a nice peach tree. If you live where somewhere anywhere between uh, zones four and eight, I believe you can have a peach tree like this too. But not only that, if you live in more southern zones, they have peach trees that are tailored to those hot climates as well. So thank you everybody for 
joining me. I got my Meyer lemon planted in a container on my deck. I have my Alberta peach planted here in my yard. I hope you learned just a little bit something. I'm excited for you to come along on this journey. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that subscribe button. Share this with your family and friends. Hit that like button. Tell Facebook there is decent quality content on this channel. Hit that little bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video. Thank you for you guys that came back to join me again. And thank you for you new people. I hope you learned a little bit of something. I'm going to water my Meyer lemon tree. In